One thing I hear from parents all the time, you know what they tell me? My kid has no desire, my kid has no passion. Parents, the number one way we can help our kids find their passion, you know how? Is have our own. Our kids need to see us being excited about something, getting up and getting after something. They need to see us modeling that for them. That's how we can best help them find their passion. Now sometimes people come up and say, well, my job is not my passion. I don't think that's a problem. That's okay. It doesn't have to be. I mean, in today's economy, I would tell you, bring all the energy and enthusiasm you can to your job. For a couple of reasons. Number one, you'll be able to keep that job, and you'll, like, you'll make yourself more valuable to the people you work with. And also, if you do that, many times you get hired to find opportunities with other companies too. Where's your passion? What do you believe in? What do you care about? How can we translate that to our kids? Now, sometimes people, when I talk to parents about stuff like this, they go, you know, we're kind of talking about parenting. Why, why are you talking about this? This is kind of a key theme for me. You know, parents, what we need to do, I think, is we need to look 15 years down the road, not 15 minutes. I think so many times we as parents are trying to solve the problem of the moment instead of looking at things like, does my son have integrity? Is, can I help my daughter find a passion? Does she have a spiritual life? We try and solve the problem of the moment. How many have kids? You know what? If you don't know it yet, there's a problem coming tomorrow. There's one coming next week. Next month, next year, there's a problem coming down the road. But I see so many parents throw the relationship with our son out of way to solve the problem of the moment. There's another problem coming tomorrow. Don't throw the relationship away because if we do, we lose our ability to be influential in our lives. We need to foster, maintain, and develop that intimate connection. That is our job as parents. Did anybody see the Minneapolis Star Tribune? Not yesterday, but a week ago, Sunday. Anybody see that eight days ago? Front page. Did you see it, Kevin? Front page, the, 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 the headline, college, is it worth the cost? If you read that, how many read the article? If you read the article, it was pretty amazing. They talked about over half the kids that start college never finish, never graduate. They talk about over, of almost 70% of the kids that do graduate, they leave with a debt of about twenty-nine dollars to $30,000. And if they go, go back and get a master's, so those kids that are becoming lawyers or doctors, they'll leave with sometimes with fifty dollars or $100,000, $150,000 in debt. They talk about the fact that real wages for college graduates, real wages, look at the benefit packages, real wages since the year 2000 have dropped somewhere between 16 and 19% for college graduates. College is obviously an option, but there's other options too. I mean, again, that's what tonight's about. When the people come up and they talk about there are great opportunities right here in Alexandria to not only earn a great living, but to live in an area that people come from all over the country to spend time with. I spend time up here vacationing two, two weeks a year, every summer. People love to come to your area, but there are opportunities in manufacturing. And I'm sure you've seen a program where it was all sent out, I think those, those pamphlets about manufacturing health care. I mean, getting a two or four year degree. I had an opportunity, as I said, to talk to some of the representatives that will be up here tonight. And they talked about a couple things that they felt were really important. They talked about parents staying involved in their high school students' education. Because so many of the students that they see don't finish high school with the requirements necessary to go on and move on and compete for better jobs, like the math and science. How many high school, again, how many at high school age short? How many are intimately involved when they pick out their courses for the year? Few hands. But I think what a lot of times happens, because I see it all the time, parents say, well, you know, counselors, that's what counselors are for. And we're leaving that to someone, we're leaving that to chance. Because so many times kids, when they get to be juniors and seniors, they kind of opt out of the math and science courses. It's easy to do that. They can have a fun time, they'll take a, they'll take a, a study break, they'll take they just opt out of that, but again, they need to have that to be able to compete for those better positions. Uh, you're smiling. You guys done that? <laughs> what grade in? So, have you taken math and science still? Yeah. Okay, are you science? Good? What's that? <laughs> Not science. And again, that's, we as parents need to be involved. It was interesting when I talked to people, because they talked a lot about the fact, you know, kids coming out get a two or a four year degree from Alexandria Tech, and they can go, and again, we're talking about incomes, you know, kids making somewhere 30 to some. Some people make fifty, sixty, eighty thousand dollars a year, and they always talk about too that they have an opportunity. Kids that get involved in the manufacturing, healthcare industry, when they if they get a job, if they want to continue their education, I think every company I spoke to said they have a hundred percent reimbursement. They pay for the kids to be able to continue their education. What a great opportunity for young people! It was interesting as we were talking about this. I was talking to the industry leaders. I asked, "What do you look for when you're hiring people?" 
And they all kind of talk about those soft skills, too. They talk about integrity. They talk about effort. They talk about getting along with other people. Uh, you know, one of the things they all talk about is work hard. We need people who are willing to work. And I think, you know, the Midwest has a great reputation for that. People on the East Coast, the West Coast, they love to hire people from Minnesota and South Dakota, Iowa, because we supposedly have a great work ethic. But I'll tell you the truth, I think that's changed. I think our young people many times don't have the opportunity to learn how to work anymore. And that is on us as parents. We need to make sure we are giving them opportunities to learn how to work. Again, if you do nothing else after tonight, but go and talk to someone you're influential with, a student, a son or daughter, I think the committee tonight will feel like that's a plus. That, that's a win for the program.